Well, good morning. I'm here with uh, John Pillar from Spirit Aero Systems at the Paris Air Show. Um, and John, thank you very much for talking with us uh, this morning. Um, can you give me some specific examples of how you're advancing composite design and manufacturing and delivering improvements in product quality and performance? Um, as you know, we're the, probably the only tier one supplier that actually worked on the A350 and the 787 large composite airplanes. And so we've learned a lot in 10 years. Our, our research and development guys have worked on newer materials, changing the, the tooling approaches, uh, changing the actual structural approaches, and then um, combining those together to give us a, a better fuselage and uh, cheaper and lighter. T tell me more about the research and technology uh, at Spirit uh, and, and where you're really focusing your efforts. Through that experience, we've decided that there's seven areas that really need to be improved upon. And we call those distinctive capabilities. And they include things like materials, the architecture of the panel for behind me, for example, the Astra panel, and tooling approaches. Tooling is one of my favorites because most people don't realize that tooling can be one-third the cost of a non-recurring composite airplane. And so we've developed a couple approaches which include floatable faces that allow you to develop the tools a little bit later in the cycle, save some money because you can, you can move the faces off and on and the base can be cheap. And then we also have variable stringer locations. And stringer locations get picked early and they kind of firm up an airplane and the earlier you firm up these lines, the earlier the cost firms up. So having a variable tool allows us to, to save money on the, on the product at the end. Oh, fascinating. So switching uh, uh, gears a little bit, the, the conversation around national defense has been a focus recently on hypersonics particularly. Sure. Uh, what, are, what are some of the unique inherent challenges in hypersonics? It's got to be different, right? It, and, it and, and how is Spirit positioned to take up that challenge? An interesting anecdote, the, uh, the, one of the first uses of composites in hypersonics, in my view, was the, was the United States Space Shuttle. When it came back into entry, the carbon tiles on the bottom of the Space Shuttle were what dissipated the heat and allowed the astronauts to safely return. And hypersonic vehicles, whether they're missiles um, or, or just airspeed things, above Mach 5, the aerodynamic heating is a big deal. So we use carbon-carbon composites, which takes the resin mostly out of the structure, and it, and it allows the structure to be able to fly, burn off some of that, and then c complete its mission. Thank you, John. That is, that is fascinating. Thanks for spending time with us to uh, explain what's going on or to, to bring us up to date and, on those technological advances. Um, it's great, and have a great show. Thank you. Will do.